everyone, it's Chris from Clearly Crafted and Digpodge Paint and Paper Crafting. I had promised this tutorial. Um, I had made this little votive and on one of the sites, people were very interested in the background um, because was it mulberry paper? Was it paint? Um, nobody was quite sure. And here it's a combination of the two. <laughs> So um, I did that with this because with this votive, um, the mulberry paper ended up actually going on and it was very translucent. While it was labeled like 28 to 30, um, once it goes on, it was very sheer. And then the design that I put on top, this um, and this, this was rice paper. So it was on another paper. So it kind of had a heavier border than I like. So I was trying to figure out, you know, what is the best way to kind of hide that. And um, I decided I was going to sponge around it with some um, just chalk paint and see how that looked. And I started and I really like the effect. It kind of tones down the mulberry paper. Don't get me wrong. I love mulberry paper. The look of it, the um, fibers in it, I think are really neat. But sometimes... I think it can actually take away from your piece a little bit because it's so liney. I don't know how else to put it. So many fibers in it, it kind of, you know, is all over the place. So I did the paint with this and it came out, I really like it. It almost gives it like a lace uh, effect. So it softens it. This one came out really nice. And then I have a triple um, thick glaze that's on there. Um, and I ended up doing it with this piece too, because I actually did not like the way this mulberry paper looked. I put it on, um, it's an off-white, obviously it was supposed to be white, it's an off-white, and I do like this mulberry paper, I use it for a lot of things, but this piece was so big, it actually looked a little bit splotchy, and I was thinking, how am I gonna fix it, how am I gonna fix it, and I ended up doing the same technique on this, where I then sponge painted um, a color called plaster. It's a, another, wasn't white, it was plaster, which went better. As you can see those colors, when you put it on, it, it went better with the, um, this color of mulberry paper. So it gives it, again, it kind of softened what looked a little more um, piecey. So uh, this one came out really nice too. And then this also has a, a glaze on it. Um, this is, uh, and then on the inside, you can definitely see the mulberry paper. So what I had told people that I would do is do a tutorial showing how I did this combination background on these pieces. Now I was in the mood for purple. So I tend to not make two of the exact same pieces. Um, so little iris piece here and some daffodils and some little, I think there are little violets on there. So what I did already, and I already did a video, um, there'll be another video that was just me applying this mulberry paper. So this is the, I put the mulberry paper down over the whole thing, um, all around the edges, the base, and then in the middle. And you can see this is pretty sheer and I did not put anything under this. Usually I put an iridescent medium or something that definitely helps with the sheerness, but I wanted you to be able to see this effect. Um, and so I didn't put anything under it. And you can see this is, this is pretty sheer here when you look at it, you can see my hand through it. Um, if I had put a napkin on it, it would probably be a little harder to see the napkin des design having it sheer like this and putting rice paper on it, you can see the rice paper better. So that's another reason that I went with a rice paper. So this really pretty um, iris. Um, and then I have a little butterfly on the inside. I always do something different on the bottom. Um, and that'll just get sponge painted on the bottom there white. And then I'm gonna end up doing like a purple. And I'll show that in another video because the video would go too long. I don't like long videos. We just try and stay short and sweet. So let's get back to the sponge painting. So this is completely done. This is dry. This has two coats of Mod Podge over top of the design. So then I took a sea sponge. You can see they have come in all different sizes. You can get them all over. See, 
my, just a regular old sea sponge and I took a piece off because I want a very controlled ability to, you know, just put a little bit in. So um, I'm going to actually wet it. I have some water here because it softens the sponge some. So it goes from being very stiff to being much more pliable. See, little sponge. And then I have just white chalk paint here on the plate. And then this is some iridescent medium that will end up going on over top. So I'm just going to dab my white chalk paint on here. And I'm gonna actually look and see how it looks on the plate before I'm putting it on my piece. Nothing worse than putting, you know, trying to get that off your piece then. And I am going to just start, you know, just gently dabbing around. You can see, see how that goes on. And I am going to end up going over the whole piece and I turn it. So it's not like, <clears throat> It's not like using a cookie cutter. Boom, 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 boom. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I am going to try and get as close to my design as I can because I want to lose some of that edge. And this is, might be a little big, so I'm going to squeeze down some of that. There we go. Get really in there around. And I will end up going with a brush then and probably stamping some more in there. And then this gets, and you can see how it's softening. See that big, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> that big fiber. And I'm just going to soften that. I'm going to go all over. And see, I haven't even gotten more paint on here. The, the sponge really soaks it up. But you're just going to be very careful about where you're placing it. You don't want it to then look speckled and polka dotted. The idea is we're looking for and some blending and some contrast and you know, some softening. So... One thing too is then when you come back in with more Mod Podge and your varnish, that again, you know, really softens this look. I know right now this looks a little more harsh and this is exactly the way it looked when I did it the last time where it's like, oh, white chalk paint. But then once you start adding a little bit of iridescent medium and then a little bit of you know, your more layers of Mod Podge and then your varnish, it really softens that up. And I'm going to continue doing this all the way around. Actually have the window open today, the shade open. And it's actually a little bright. Sorry for the silence there. Paying attention to what I'm doing. Try not to make a mistake because then I'll curse like a sailor. <laughs> Everybody getting ready for spring. I'm a big gardener. That's why you'll see a lot of my pieces are flowers and I like different flowers. That's why I went with the iris here. It's not, you don't often see iris on um, things. You get your roses and you know, a lot of sunflowers. I love sunflowers and um, all the different, right now a lot of tulips this spring. I like some of the different ones. It's always had some interest when you have a different flower. 
and the colors. There's so many beautiful colors. And so this is just going to continue. You can see how that is there. I'm going to end up doing a round and then over here the base will I'll sponge on white and then that'll cover and then I'm going to come back with a purple over this and we'll be finishing this in another video so I don't want to keep you on too long but um and then I'll show you how this comes out all right happy crafting <laughs>